Hi, my name is Clara Halpin and you are very welcome back to the Highlands Gallery for this workshop, Micro Macro, where we will be looking at some artworks from the Open Submission Exhibition, which is currently on at the Highlands Gallery. And then we will be making our own camera obscure, using some simple materials to turn our worlds upside down. Over 500 artists sent in their artworks for this exhibition, and just 41 artworks were selected by the panel of judges. We had a really tough job to select and choose and agree with each other on which artworks to include in the exhibition. There are paintings, drawings, prints, sculptures, photographs, videos in all shapes and sizes. Today we are going to look at some of the photographic artworks in this exhibition. First, let's take a quiet moment to have a look at this work by Diane White. What do you see? What is going on? We're looking at uh, some sort of a town or city. There are lots of buildings and they seem to be all on top of each other. And as well as that, they seem to be maybe like they're into the side of a mountain and maybe even they're curved into, I don't know, a valley or a mountain. And some of the buildings up the top, if you look, or like what looks to be the top, uh, they even look like they're maybe like uh, arches or maybe like tunnels and they're going into the mountain. And I'm wondering, is there maybe more of this city kind of behind or maybe further into the mountain, maybe like caves or tunnels or something? And it makes me think of maybe like it's an ancient city and I'm thinking of that idea of people living in caves and maybe like they're ancient caves. And then I'm looking and I'm seeing that hang on, there's, there's, there's no people here. So I wonder... Does anyone live here? Because it looks like they're houses that are kind of connected by these steps up so to allow people to move between them. And it looks like there might be kind of laneways or streets. Um, but I can't see any people. But yet I can see that there's some cars just down kind of, kind of towards the bottom. And first I'm wondering how those cars got there because I can't see the streets seem to be too narrow to drive up. And then I spot some people. Just right down at the bottom, there seems to be some people. And I'm wondering, I don't think by the look of them, they don't seem to maybe live there. So I'm wondering, did, have they come to visit this place? And maybe they've come, there seems to be actually some motorbikes over there beside the cars. And... I'm kind of intrigued, really interested in, you know, what is this place or how big is it? Because because I can't see the sky, I can't see how big it is. And while it looks very old, I've also noticed I'm drawn to these pink doors that kind of look like they might be freshly painted. And then there's some green ones down at the bottom. And then there's some green ones up at the top. So there seems to be like, it looks like that this try to maybe, I don't know, make this place new again, or maybe kind of not make it new, but maybe do it up and to maybe rejuvenate it. Because it doesn't look like there's anyone living here for me. So I really wanted to find out where this place was or how big it is or what, what, what is it. So I looked to see what the artist had said. So... Diane White is the artist and she said she's fascinated by this place and it's a place called Matera in Italy and it is like an underground city. So the Sassi di Matera is a complex of cave dwellings and tunnels and they're carved into the ancient river canyon and it's one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. It's like an underground city. You can only see 30% of the tunnels on the surface. The rest of them are in, uh, the rest of the caves and tunnels are inside the mountain. And it was abandoned in about the 1950s because it got too hard for the people to live there, the living conditions and working conditions. And it was abandoned for maybe 30 years. And it's only recently that they've tried to maybe make it into a tourist attraction. So from the idea, 
I can't see how big this photograph is, so it's kind of hard to judge how big the, uh, the place is. And so I'm interested in this idea of the size of a human within the size of the picture and then the size of the world around them and then the size of the bit that we can't see in the photograph, these kind of underground caves. So here is our next photographic work. It is by Jane Cummins and it's called Ackle Blue. So here we are immersed in sea and sky. And because there's no people or landscape or details, once again, we can't figure how big this is or how big are we in this image. So it could be that the artist has zoomed in so we're looking at a detail or a micro cosmos or micro scale teeny tiny or else the artist has zoomed out and we're now looking at this macro scale which is like a huge scale so it's like the world surrounding us the sea and the sky and then it makes us think and realize how teeny tiny we are in the world Another artist who looks at this idea of scale and size and kind of mixing up those ideas is Yvette Monaghan in her artwork, A Revolution of Stardust. So here we seem to be looking at a night sky, maybe some stars and maybe that's the Milky Way and maybe there's some shooting stars in there as well. So this makes us think of now we're looking beyond our world and out into the universe beyond our planet. But there's something else there in the middle of this artwork. It seems to be something, I don't know, like hairs or... I mean, actually, if you look at it sideways, it actually maybe looks like eyelashes. And this then changes the scale of what we're looking at and kind of mixes it up for us. Because there's the human scale against this universal or cosmic scale. And the artist explains that when she had her daughter, it changed how she looked at the size of everything. So suddenly coffee grinds in the sink in the morning started to look like a moonscape. And she noticed these patterns repeated in the small and teeny tiny scale against the macrocosmos or the bigger scale. So here she has placed an image of her daughter's eyelash against the night sky. So these are some of the ideas around how artists change how we look at the world and even how we look at the images that they create and how they make us stop and think and wonder about how we see the world. So we're going to make a camera obscura which will kind of change the way we look at the world immediately around us. So if you have your materials together We'll get started and I'll explain what it is as we go along. So what is a camera obscura? It comes from the Latin meaning dark room, camera meaning room and obscura meaning darkened or dark. It's also referred to as a pinhole image and it is the natural optical phenomenon that happens when an image of a scene on the other side of a screen is projected through a small pinhole in the screen so the image is inverted left to right and upside down. Confused? Look, we'll see how we get on when we make our own. Scientists and artists have been using this device for hundreds of years. Today we're not going to make a room, full room or full camera obscura, we're going to make a tube obscura. So you can carry it around and it'll be like a mobile camera obscura. So materials wise you will need a pencil, scissors, masking tape, sellotape and most importantly a pin, a pin hole. Some tracing paper, um, some heavy black paper or card and then some tin foil and some tubes. I used, uh, you can either use a inside of kitchen roll 
or like have a heavier tube from a post. So to begin, you need to place your tube down on top of your tracing paper and trace the outline of the tube. And then once you've done that, you then lay down either a bigger circle, in this case I use my masking tape, and drew around that circle, so you ended up with a double circle, or nearly what looks to be like a ring. And then using your ruler, um, just to divide that outer ring into sections, as you can see where I've done there. So this is going to help us to attach it onto the tube. So then you can cut around the outside circle, like this, and then just cut in little tabs. So you're just cutting in as far as the inner circle. And then you're going to put your tube back down onto this, fold up each little section, and then using your masking tape or your sellotape, you want to tape down each section. So you should end up with a clear kind of uh, or, well, neat enough. So then you're going to lay your tube down onto your sheet of heavy black paper and try and roll a tube out of the sheet of black paper. And once you've formed a tube, then tape that up and it's slotted onto the end of your cardboard tube and then use more tape then to secure it. So it should be nice and solid. So your tracing paper screen is inside the black tube. So then you need to then put a tinfoil cover over the end of this black tube. So if you just place the tube upright on your tinfoil, then nearly kind of just squash the tinfoil up around. Try and keep it as smooth as you can along the top, but around the sides just so it's gripping. Uh, it doesn't have to be as neat. So then just tape around and tinfoil is quite delicate so uh, gently does it. And then using your pin you're going to put in the center of this a little pinhole. So there you have your tube camera obscura. To look through your tube obscura look through the cardboard end with one eye Use your hands to block out as much light as you can around the edge of the tube and then point it towards the light, so looking out a window. Give your eyes time to adjust. Slowly but surely you should see the outside world transformed upside down, back to front and appearing like a little pinhole image inside the tube. Here is my view onto the street from my sitting room. So you'll notice that the house is opposite and then turned upside down. My window has been turned upside down. There's some plants on the windowsill and they now look like they're hanging. So experiment with looking at different things close up, far away. So here I set up a little still life. And you'll notice the more light you put out, the darker the clearer the image becomes. So you're using your hands to block out more and more light. So take it out and about, have a look around and you can explore a huge world through a tiny pinhole and see it turned upside down, back to front, micro macro. I took these images through my tube obscure using my phone and trying to block out as much light as possible. So if you've got any photos from your out and about explorations with your tube obscura, please send them back in to us at info at where we'd love to see them on our online gallery.